Is this a time machine or security tech? So I've been having a problem with the squirrels that live up in the trees here. They're awfully cute, but they like to eat all of my produce and I don't want that to happen anymore. You wanna see what happens when I try to stop these thieves from taking my strawberries? These are my tomato plants from last year. Obviously they don't look so great because of course they didn't make it through the winter, but I did try to put, I don't know if you can see from here, but I, here we go. I did put a bunch of bird mesh around the tomatoes, but the squirrels just stuck their little hands through it and they were able to pull the tomatoes towards them and eat them anyway. Scoundrels. Despite the fact I've tried to put a maze of bird and squirrel mesh, they are still getting my strawberries. They ate that one. They ate both of these strawberries. It's very upsetting. They were beautiful. I wanna be able to protect this tomato plant. I already have the cage in there ready to go. It stands about four feet tall. I also have this lower section with peppers and some strawberries. I also wanna protect my raspberries and my blueberries that I'm gonna be planting in the ground. This is my itty bitty tomato plant that I have so far, but I know it's gonna grow quite a bit taller. I even have a couple of tomatoes on there and it's gonna be about four feet tall that I'm gonna need. This section with the peppers and the strawberries, I'm not gonna need it as tall. So I got this poultry netting, AKA chicken wire. It has a one inch opening and it's two feet tall by 50 feet long. I got some landscaping staples in the hopes that it will help keep the cages in place. We interrupt this video to bring you Where's Rocco? Hey, what are you eating? So here's my idea. I know it's a lot of scribbles. Basically, I've got the first panel at the bottom that's only two feet. So if it's a smaller plant, I can start small with a, with the shorter two feet. And then if I need to add it on, for example, if I have a small tomato and the tomato plant grows, then I can add the second row of chicken wire here. I also need enough chicken wire to cover the top so the squirrels can't get in. I also need some extra panels so that I can have access doors to be able to grab the produce when I need to instead of having to pull the whole chicken wire thing off the top of the plant. That's just not gonna work when these plants get bigger. This is more of my idea that's gonna go over the strawberry plant and the pepper plant, something that has hinges in the back where I can lift the lid and access everything that I need to access there. I had put a fabric measuring tape around the base of this plant and it went around about five feet. It seems like it should give me enough room. If it's not enough room, I can always open up the back where the seam is and add an extra panel to make it a little bit wider as the plant grows. Here I need about three and a half feet from there to there. And I need to go about two feet from the front to the back of the strawberries. The chicken wire is actually pretty tricky to open. I noticed that there is a wire that's wrapping around the whole chicken wire and that was my clue. So I looked around the edges of both sides and eventually I found this weird shape here. Sure enough, I pulled on it. It is the end of the wire. After undoing that wire at the top, the wire loosened and it's all the way at the bottom here. It's easier for me to take off now. And as you can see, this is starting to pop out. So I know we did the right thing. I get out the measuring tape so that I can make sure that I have it at the right length. You'll see me start with the gloves, but it's a do as I say, not as I do moment. I feel like it's easier for me to manipulate the chicken wire when I don't have the gloves on but then of course I pay for it with metal stabbings later. It's somewhat difficult to work with. The roll of wires round up really, really tight. I try to flip it over to see if that helps a little bit. It's not enough to be doing me any favors. So I grab a couple of plant pots that have some soil in them. They are heavy enough to be able to hold the wire down for me, like an extra set of hands. I take a Sharpie so that I can mark off the line where I wanna be able to come back later with wire cutters. All of the hexagons look so similar, I don't wanna lose my place. Eventually, I make my way across the chicken wire, and I don't really want the unsightly folded over edge, so I trim that off as well. And then I wanna test it out. 
looks like it's pretty good. So I grab the needle nose pliers so I can take the sharp pointed raw edge and curl it over so that it doesn't hurt me. But it keeps hurting me anyway. I try to make sure that I overlap by four hexagons, but this stuff is tricky to work with. It keeps getting stuck. But eventually I get into a flow and I'm able to get the job done. If you wanted to see it a little bit more close up, I'm trying to grab the wires, curl them around and wrap them around the other layer of chicken wire so that it's secure and safe so that it doesn't hurt you whenever you rub your hands back and forth over it. Pro tip. Pro tip. Pro tip. For the first one, all of these spikes were already turned in with the pliers so that I wouldn't hurt myself. For the second one, I tried just connecting them right at the edges so that I could curl them in, but because it wasn't overlapped, there was no structural support and it just bent in, kind of making a heart shape and that wasn't going to work. It needs to be able to hold its shape and so the overlapping is what seems to work the best. But this time what I'm trying to do is instead of wasting the time to curl these in first, I am actually just overlapping and then I'm going to secure each side and see if that actually works better for me. I'm really getting into the rhythm. This ends up being the best way. Seems more efficient and it's nice and sturdy and it looks better. I need to make the opening so that I can have the door. First I use the Sharpie to make my line where I want to cut so I don't forget. Then I use the wire cutters to clip open the opening to make the hole. Then I use the needle nose pliers again to make those pointy edges much safer. Now I'm working on the top. I flatten out a piece of wire. I use a Sharpie to mark out where I'm going to need to trim the lid. I use a zip tie on the one side that doesn't have any wires that I can use to connect it to the base just to hold it in there. I go on the right side and the left side just to tack down the lid that way I can safely and easily cut the corners of the wire square so that I can curve those pieces around to attach it to the base. All right, the top is done. I don't think I need this piece. That was just to hold it together while I worked on it. Now I need to make some access doors for the holes. So the door needs to be to cover it at least eight inches and it needs to be more than that because I need to overlap it and I need to round the corner. So I'm thinking at least 10 inches wide. And here we go again with all this nonsense. I decided on 11 inches instead because I'd rather have it be a little bit over than a little bit too short. I curl the pointy edges over so they don't hurt me in the future. I trim down the length of chicken wire and then I finish off the sharp edges once again. Using those curled over wires, I sort of wrap it around to make a temporary hinge while I get the zip ties and then I use those zip ties for the more permanent hinge. Trim the zip ties and now we have a functioning door. All right, and if we put the clip there, it's not the prettiest in the world. It looks like that's going to keep the critters out. Not bad. And then I finish off the next door. How come no one has told me I have that many gray hairs on the back of my head? I'm not ready to change my memoji. Good thing that dies on the way. And it doesn't look like any little critter is going to be able to get in. If they can get in, they sure can get out. To connect the top and the bottom, I use eight zip ties. Then I go around and trim the zip ties because we don't need those ends sticking out. Moment of truth. Let's put it up on top of the tomato plant. It seems to fit perfectly over the top. I think it looks great. Let's pretend I want to get some tomatoes. I'm so excited. I'm going to get those tomatoes instead of sticky squirrels. 
You hear that, squirrels? Using a hammer, I tap down the landscaping staples. Not that I think a squirrel is going to be able to lift up the cage without it, but at least it makes it more secure. Well, this one's done. They still have to do the blueberries and the raspberries, and I think they're only going to need about half the size. So if I make two more of these, I think I will be done with those up there. And then of course I have to make the strawberry and pepper one. I'm gonna make these off camera because you already saw me make them once and it's just gonna be a repeat. And it's gonna be faster if I put the camera down for now and just take care of it. See you in a few. Rocco, hey, what you doing? So I tried putting these two cages on top of the raspberry and blueberry bushes, but they either fit way too perfectly over the blueberry bush and over the raspberries, it actually was a little bit too short. So I think I'm only gonna add one more foot to the bottom to make it three feet tall and it should give it plenty of space to grow. And again, I can always add more if I need to in the future. So I just finished adding the extra foot of chicken wire to the bottom of the cages for the raspberry and the blueberry plants. They've also been attached with the zip ties. On the back of the strawberry cage, I am putting a bunch of zip ties where the top meets the back side so that I can use it as hinges. And here is the strawberry cage. I have a bunch of clothespins on there to keep the lid closed. Hey buddy, how you doing? Sunbathing lizard. Somehow the cage fits perfectly. Ideally, the framing would be made out of wood or something that gave it some more structure, but I was going low budget and I think it's worked out great. Hopefully the squirrels will not come take my stuff. I'm sure they'll get some of the produce, but the idea is to minimize the theft. I will say I like the look of the black zip ties more than the look of the white. And I have a feeling if I go to spray paint these cages, not over the plants obviously, but I, if I take these down and I spray paint them, I think they're gonna look better out here. Let me know if you think I should do it in the comments below. The raspberry cage and the blueberry cage are fully functioning. I'll let you know during the summer if they seem to work out. Recently, I made a video about fixing my vinyl window that was stuck. I will put a link in the description below. I have close to seven subscribers right now, so giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel would really help me out. Thanks so much and see you soon. Squirrel, come on. Oh. He left already. Where'd you go? Where'd he go? Look at that. Everything against the fence has been eaten. This. And that, and that, everything within arm's reach. But that's fine. You can't get all the goodies in the middle.